when they call me Maria Jesus. So don't think that I'm not taking you into consideration if you use my name, because it's just that I'm not very good at that. So, okay. This presentation is not connected with, uh, with the topic that Alejandra was presenting, because initially I was uh, dealing with the uh, CSEA and collaborative scenarios, and then when I moved to the University of Lausanne, we changed somehow a little bit the topic, and we were much more focused on inquiry-based learning. But this uh, idea of uh, trying to put together the pedagogical uh, background and the uh, learning analytics was guiding us somehow in the design of learning solutions. So, as I was mentioning in the program we were running, the, the idea was to use inquiry-based learning to provide some scaffold and to guide the, the learning of uh, STEM education and the STEM uh, subjects. Uh, so that in this case, the idea that, okay, we need to push a little bit the students in order to create their own, um, their, own their own process. So we need them to hypothesize, to have some imagination, to push them in order to envision how the, the, the reality should, uh, should happen, should be. Then to do some tests and finally to verify whether the original hypothesis and the real facts, they, they, were, uh, they were real or not. So... Uh, one of the huge challenges that inquiry based learning is facing is that it's necessary to provide support, but not only to the students, but also to the teachers. So if you need to help your students, you need to know what is the gap, what is the part that is missing, and what, is, what are the doubts that they, that they need to, to face. So in order to do that, we were trying to review some uh, literature regarding, okay, what are the frustration is that teachers are facing? Because there are some things that are, much, they are very general, and then there are other topics that are more related to the specific pedagogical approach that we were facing. So, we more or less within the pilot, there were three main topics that uh, could require attention. One is the learning design, so the teacher may need support in order to take decisions about how the set of activities should be organized, what kind of resources could be relevant, what kind of apps could, could be helpful. Another thing is the learning process, so if you are working with the students and the activity is taking some, some time, you may need at some point to know what is happening and whether you may need to intervene or regulate the scenario in order to, um, to, to move it to the point that uh, you, you want to, to read it. And the other thing is the learning outcome. So you don't only need to follow the process, at some point it's proven that you, you need to provide some scores and to evaluate the results of the student. So, we were having a look to, to different uh, apps and platforms that were supporting inquiry based learning. So in this case, there are different kind of uh, degrees of support for both teachers and the students. There are some of them that are very rigid, like this is your resource, use it, and that's all. Others, they allow you to modify somehow a little bit the design and introduce some changes. And there are also some cases where the teacher may have some additional functionalities, such as, for instance, learning analytics. So, the, the teacher is a little bit more free, so they can create new scenarios, they can create new resources, they can adapt it to their, to their own uh, situations. And one of the platforms that we were dealing with and that provided kind of support is GOLA, the project where some of the people here in the room are also So what is GOLA? GOLA is trying to combine a pedagogical approach, that is inquiry-based learning, together with open educational resources, and some of these resources indeed are remote labs, and uh, also provide some orchestration support for both teachers and students. So this is an example of the resource that could be served from the teacher to the students. At the end, the, the student will, will, will see this a, a web application, a web, that uh, is a structure according to the pedagogical design. So the, the student will have to go through the orientation, the investigation, create some conclusions at the end. And in each one of the, of the phases, they will see a set of resources that could be videos, could be any kind of uh, online resource that could be like. So, what we did was to run a, a questionnaire with some teachers that were experts on inquiry based learning, trying to have them by default, okay, so what do you need? So, this morning we were uh, discussing whether it's necessary to take into account the teacher's point of view. So, if we are trying to support teachers and they already have a set of needs, let's try to have a look to what is what they were asking for. And then apart from this survey, we try to go to some, to some case studies. Because many times there are things that are popping up and we are even not aware of what we need till we need to face it. And we are in the, in the real setting and we have to deal with the situation. So, 
what we realized is we were like there were many points in common. So even if the teachers were not talking to each other, they were there were many things that were common in their in their feedback. And uh, especially they were focused. The main point was the learning outcome. So if you want to to integrate uh, or to adopt a new technology, either you let me know what the my students are doing, and I can take something at the end. Or I won't use it because since I have to evaluate my students and I, can, I need to provide some kind of evidence, either I have it or I'm sorry, I will use it one day or something like this, but it will be all. The second point was the learning process. So I need to know whether my students are on task because if they are just playing with the app, I'm sorry, but I cannot control the scenario and it will create some kind of noise and I won't, I won't be confident, confident with it. And the third point was the learning design. So. A few teachers were considering that getting some feedback could be relevant, but it was not a topic that was popping up very frequently. Mm. So what we tried to detect was, okay, there are a set of things that could be mediated through learning analytics. So there are many aspects that we don't need to be next to the teacher with him and decide, okay, this is relevant, let's try to take some data, this is the result. So there are many things that could be automatized. So, what we try to do is like, okay, let's try to do an, also an interview. We afterwards we work with the teacher in the scenario. We were doing these sort of observations, and uh, and we got finally another interview to get their feedback. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the rooms with the teacher. So there were two different cases in the and two different ways of using learning analytics in these scenarios. We were focused in these cases to uh, monitoring tools. Okay, so we were trying to let the teacher know what was happening during the session. And for both activities was, uh, were just like one hour and 15 minutes, something like that. And it was all together, so it was not completely different. And in this case, what the, student, in the, what the teacher was doing, she was uh, having uh, through the demur all the results of the learning analytics. And she was using these tools in order to know what was the phase where the students were working. So it was letting in her know what was the group of the students that she needed to address. Because maybe they were delayed, maybe they were having some kind of issues, and they were using this as a kind of guidance. And also it was curious because the students, as soon as they were seeing what was happening, they were many times even playing, oh hey, you are delayed, and they were like uh, trying to play with each other to, to run and go faster. In the other case, it was totally hidden information to the, to the students. So the teacher decided that he didn't want to share the information with the students. And uh, he was controlling all the scenario from his uh, screen. So you could see that the students are in the back part, and he was checking where they were. Indeed, in this scenario, it was a little bit different because even the teacher from here, he could switch to, to the screens of the, of the students, so he could know what, what they were seeing. So what we did, so the, the solutions that we were presenting here, it was Super simple. So there was no very deep analysis of the student work. We were just so I think that here I have something. So we were trying to take into account what was the context. So we were trying to infer what was the sequence of phases presented by the teacher. This is this was one thing. Then we were trying to use some um, some standards in order to simplify the data gathering and in order to, to promote that this solution was not just specific to this platform but to any other platform complying with some kind of constraints. So it was using activity streams and open social. So open social was helping us in order to get information about the context. And activity streams was helping us in order to have something a little bit homogeneous in terms of data gathered from the future. So these apps, were, were, they were doing, they were real time. So through web sockets, they were trying to get the data and, and updating the information from the students. So as soon as the students were changing, we could see whether, whether they were located. The other app that we were using was measuring the time that they were devoted to the different phases. So at the end of the scenario, it was much more relevant for the teacher because they realized that during the time being, it was not so necessary during the session to check, okay, it was 5 minutes or it was 17, but it was more afterwards because uh, they realized that there were some phases that the students uh, devoted much more time than initially expected. So they noticed that, okay, so maybe here I put too much information, and so it should be shorter, and then they were putting more or less emphasis in the different activities in order to keep it as uh, light as uh, they wanted. And the other app, what they was trying to do was basically to detect whether the students were submitting information. But we could do it without using the learning analytics, but in this case we were trying to 
to create some context information, like, okay, if I'm able to detect some traces, I could provide uh, data about even if the students are submitting the result. That is something that many of us need to know if we have a set of the students. And if, uh, as in the example that uh, Alejandra was mentioning before, if you have 165 people and you need to know whether they submitted or not the solutions, uh, you don't want to be checking every five minutes whether the, the situation is over or not. So, what we realized is that, uh, especially for the teachers, during the session, what the part was, that was relevant was to know whether, uh, which, was, which was the face that, uh, that was uh, in current use by the students. And then the time spent during the session wasn't relevant. But they were saying us, okay, but don't, but don't remove it. Because for me, I need it in order to do a, some kind of reflection that is super easy for me because I will have more or less the average and I can check what the uh, specific student is doing. So there are some things that are initially they were not expecting, like, okay, no, I don't devote so much time to reflection, but then if it's just taking to me like a couple of minutes, okay, that's fine. In that case, it's, it, I'm going to get a lot of uh, benefits with a, a very small investment. And then we had an issue with the students. So since we were analyzing the data from the students, at the end of the session, we shared information with them. So in the first scenario, it was uh, with the students that, um, that had the, all the information in the DMIR. And for them, it was something that was useful. So they were considering that uh, having a reference point about the others could give them a clue about whether they were delayed or not. So it, could, it was something that they could consider as positive. But when we switched into the second scenario, it was the other way around. We had a few students that they said, OK, that's cool. I, I want to know how well I'm performing. But those students that feel the same, they didn't want to. So it was like, I'm happy if my teacher knows how I'm doing, but I don't want to be compared with my with my student with my colleagues because I feel super stressed. And they were really scared of what and it was something that was really surprising. So I think that for me this is a point that many times we cannot impose like solutions that are working for every single context because each each room, each classroom is working in a different way. So in the first uh, situation, the teacher preferred to share it with everyone, and they were self-regulating themselves. Well, in the other case, it was impossible because it was frustrating the, the many of the students. So after what we said, okay, we have a few scenarios that are more or less like well giving us some clues, and we share it also with a, a set of expert teachers in inquiry based learning. And for them, um, Although in the first uh, case, we were considering, okay, it seems that the claim expense is nothing very relevant. It's like, okay, for the reflection, that should be work. But then we realized that when we were presenting the information to the, to the teachers and they were not specifically applying, uh, asking for it, that was the best rated one. So what we can get from this is that, okay, there are many things that sometimes we are not we, we don't realize that we, we need to have a kind of balance between, okay, where are the teacher needs or the user needs and what we can offer to them. So if we are involved somehow during the scenarios, we are involved in the design, we, we have a kind of uh, forum with the users, it's much easier to get somehow adoption and try to, to provide solutions that are addressing what they need to, to solve in the scenario. For instance, something that we realized is that during the sessions, they were always asking us, okay, do you like my, my design? Do you have an idea? What, what should I do? Do you have any other clue about what apps could, uh, could work? So some of my, one of my colleagues especially, that probably you have seen him around, is Andri. He's not here, but he's in the other room. Uh, decided to take uh, in another approach. So the idea was, okay, up to now we were using traces, so let's use now also the content. So we were measuring how they were dealing with the content. So the idea was, okay, let's, if we are able to identify some interests, maybe we are able to provide some recommendations. So the, the traces were helping us in order to weight the different uh, concepts that we infer from all the interests, that we infer from the, from the teachers. So it allowed us, okay, based on the interest of the user, we were getting some potential ideas about relevant content and also users that could have similar approaches. It was not so much deep into the content. We, we tried to move a little bit further and say, okay, you may deal a lot of with uh, online labs, but this specific topic is the one that seems to be very redundant in your, in your activity. So, what we got here was like, okay, it seemed that uh, for the teachers, in many cases, 
that was a nice way to, to realize about your content. But what we identified at the end that for them the most useful thing was to know where were the apps that could support the scaffolding, that this could be a need that is specific for the for the case of inquiry-based learning. Because in the other cases, like, okay, knowing how long uh, took my students to work with, uh, with activity, okay, it's not specific of inquiry-based learning. We can face it in every kind of activity that we, we are working in. Or what are the resources that they are using? And there are many cases that are served with any kind of learning approach. So conclusions. In this case, uh, we were trying to under better understand the what the teacher orchestration is for the context of inquiry-based learning. And uh, we were, again, following a design based research approach and as data gathering techniques we were using either surveys and case studies. The strategy that we were trying to take into consideration was contextual learning analytics. And for us, our context was somehow a simplification of the learning design. And uh, the finding that we can get it is that there are many learning analytics solutions that could support the different levels of the different phases of, uh, of, uh, of the life cycle of the learning activity. And uh, especially that very simple things could give them a very simple solution that could simplify the way that they, they, they need to deal with the learning and scenario. And maybe through this kind of strategies it's easier to, to get something working in the final classroom. Because we were discussing today, okay, we are doing a lot of things at the university and doing research, but then when I go to the to the schools, I don't see them ever used. So I think that this is something that we need to improve. So for future work, uh, we want to explore not only the part of the teacher, we want also to take into account what are the needs of the students and to let them decide what kind of information could be relevant or not for them, and also to further evaluate the solutions that we will provide. So that's all. These are my colleagues. So if you want to to talk with Andre especially about the part of the recommender and also contribution from his PhD, feel free. We will be very happy about discussing our Thank you, Chus. Uh, if we are a little bit more time scale, but uh, provided it is the last uh, session today, no? uh, we can extend two more minutes for questions. Or so, if you have any comment, question, you must ask. Just a comment. <laughs> I think the work you are doing is very interesting. Uh, we ask some questions to you because we are also working with teachers and also something related with the learning design and how teachers create uh, educational resources. Uh, we are focusing on the accessibility of the resources mm -hmm. and trying to uh, bring them support on, on how they uh, can be aware of how uh, the resources are accessible. So uh, we have been following your work <laughs> and I, I think it's, it's interesting area of research to work with teachers because most of the work done in learning analytics is more oriented to students and I think work inside of teachers is also um, a good idea because um, they need to be aware of uh, what are they doing and how that uh, resources uh, can be improved, can be applied in other ways. Okay, so thank you to all of you. <laughs>